what type and how much psyllium to lower LDL cholesterol. Hi, I'm Chris Masterjohn and I have a PhD in nutritional sciences. I am not a medical doctor and nothing contained in this episode may be construed as medical or nutritional advice of any kind or a substitute therefore. This episode is meant purely as scientific education. If you wish to act on any ideas presented in this episode, please consult your physician first and never take anything herein as a reason to contradict medical advice. With that said, enjoy the episode. Okay, so uh, my question uh, today, Chris, is about psyllium husk and potentially using it as a tool to lower LDL cholesterol levels. Um, And the question is, in that context, um, can you share your thoughts and advice around specific form or even specific supplements of psyllium husk for that purpose? Um, dosing. Yeah, I don't. I don't have too much to say about this. Um, I do know, like, basically, psyllium husk is going to come in. I mean, pretty much two forms. There's the flakes and there's the powder. Um, the powder is going to be more effective, but or at least on a like per dose amount, the powder is going to be more effective just because it has more surface area. Um, but I don't know if that really means much, except that you need to change the dose. So let me see if I can quickly pull up uh, something on the ones that have been... Okay, so there's six studies on uh, LDL cholesterol. Let me... Hold on one second. Just got to... All right, am I here now? Um, so, all right, here's one, um, they used five grams, I think twice a day using plantigo psyllium. I'm not even sure what that is. It looks like a brand name. Um, 120 people had a six-week diet period of diet counseling followed by a six-week treatment period. Uh, oh, it looks like this wasn't even randomized. Uh, but anyway, they measured blood lipids every two weeks. Um, oh, here... This is a better description. There were foil packets containing five grams and they consumed three doses. So not twice a day, three times a day. So it's 15 grams total, uh, five grams before each meal. Um, And I'm going to have to pull up the results here. Hold on. Uh, all right, so it looks like it looks like it took um, basically took six weeks for the effect to be maximized, but two weeks for the oh wait a second that's glucose that's not LDL um, Oh, for the blood lipids, they didn't measure them every two weeks. They just measured them at the end of the study, it looks like. Uh, LDL cholesterol went from uh, 140 to 118 with 15 grams of psyllium. And total cholesterol went from 215 to 195. So it's reducing LDL more than total. Um and they used, let's see, and 
I'm not sure what. Um, I guess plantigo is just the technical name for the plant. Oh, this was made by Metamucil. <laughs> so that might help us figure it out. Um, Metamucil. Yeah, I had seen that referenced as a, as a form or brand used in some cases. Yeah, well, do you know what type of... Uh, of sil- whether it's a husk or powder, it looks like um, on their website, it looks like it's the husk, like the mm-hmm. flaky part. That's what I was gathering, but I haven't yeah. confirmed. Yeah. Well, um, okay. So 15 grams of the, of the flaky stuff looks sufficient. You could probably get, I'm going to guess you could get, um, that you could get similar effects if you uh, used like one third the dose of the of the fine powder, but um, I don't know. Did you have any questions beyond uh, the powder versus the husk? Yeah, just um, on the dosing, which I think you you just found some information on that. But then the third part is maybe even a broader question than just regarding psyllium husk um, is what are your thoughts on minimum time after of doing something like this psyllium husk or say other dietary intervention like lowering overall fat, saturated fat or cholesterol? What is your thought on the minimum amount of time? I would say the, I would say the, yeah, I would say the, I would say the minimum time is four weeks. Four weeks. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, just perusing through these various uh, trials summaries, it looks like, it looks like the doses used have been between six grams and 15 grams and tend to be more in the 10 to 15 gram area. Um, and then let me look, and a lot of this stuff is in diabetics, but I think before we finish this, I think I just want to look at this meta analysis to see if they found, if they did any subgrouping by dose or uh, type of product, because that itself might be interesting. So, um, It doesn't look like they did actually. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna say, um, like generally speaking, give a good four weeks for any effect to transfer into your to translate into an effect on blood lipids. Um, on psyllium husk, you're probably gonna get the best results with 15 grams of psyllium, uh, and you can probably cut that in a half or a third with the powder. Uh, the fine powder versus the flaky husk. Um, But you might want to start on a higher dose than you expect rather than a lower one, just to make sure that when you test the effect on your blood lipids, you don't miss out on a real effect because your dose was too small. That sounds great, Chris. Thanks for the input. That helps a lot. You're welcome. Take care, Denny. Thank you for your question. This episode was part of a Q&A for members of the CMJ Masterpass, where I hold monthly private Zoom Q&As for my members. The Masterpass also serves as a buyer's club with exclusive and massive discounts on your favorite premium foods and health products, including pasture-raised and wild meat and seafood, supplements, sleep accessories, water filters, phototherapy devices, and much more. If you'd like to participate in these Q&As, you can join the Masterpass at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash masterpass and use the code Q&A, spelled Q-A-N-D-A, Q&A, for 10% lifetime discount. I am currently working full-time on finishing my first book, Vitamins and Minerals 101, How to Get the Nutrients You Need on Any Diet. I will let you know when I have a release date. In the meantime, you can pre-order the book at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash book. Testing Nutritional Status, The Ultimate Cheat Sheet, has been newly released as version 1.3. This is my comprehensive system for managing nutritional status with lab tests, dietary analysis, and comprehensive intake of your signs and symptoms. The new version has a comprehensive guide 
to interpreting the Genova methylation panel. You can pick up your copy at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash cheat sheet. In my consulting, I am neither a medical practitioner nor a coach. I serve as your data analyst and your strategist. I teach you scientific principles of health and wellness, help you analyze your data, and help brainstorm actionable strategies. You can sign up for a consultation at chrismasterjohnphd.com slash consultations. Please consider supporting my work at no extra cost to you by visiting my support page and making a purchase with one of my affiliate links. Some of my most popular affiliates are also listed in the description of this video with links that will give me credit for your purchase. I will try to respond to comments when I can, but my presence will be intermittent while I'm finishing my book. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next episode.